and author of the new book, a novel, Treason. Welcome, Mr. Speaker. It's glad to have we're glad to have you here this morning. You heard Tim Kaine talk about his concerns over charges of a rigged election. But Mr. Trump has been continuing to ramp up the rhetoric in tweets and speeches. Senator Jeff Sessions joined the course yesterday saying they are attempting to rig the election. So who are they and how are they doing this? Well, I think they are the news media. This is not about election officials at the precinct level. This is about last Friday when the networks spent 23 minutes on the Trump tape and less than one minute, all three networks combined, less than one minute on Hillary Clinton's secret speeches that were being revealed in WikiLeaks. And you look at that and you say, I mean, I think it's amazing that Trump is as close as he is right now, considering the one-sidedness of the news media barrage. And the best description of it is by Barry Castleman in his blog, where he said, this is a coup d'etat. He said, 14 million citizens in private ballots picked Donald Trump. 20 TV executives have decided to destroy him. But, but you say it's not at the precinct level, but Trump has also told people to monitor polling stations. They should. You look at Philadelphia, you look at St. Louis, you look at Chicago. I mean, again, I'm old enough. I, I remember when Richard Nixon had the election stolen in 1960, and no serious historian doubts that Illinois and Texas were stolen. So to suggest that we have, that you don't have theft in, Phil in Philadelphia is to deny reality. So you really think this election could be stolen? Do you believe that if Mr. Trump loses, it will be because of a massive conspiracy or fraud, not because more Americans voted for someone else? I think that without the unending one-sided assault of the news media, Trump would be beating Hillary by 15 points. I think when you look at WikiLeaks and you look at all the things she has said, when you look at the deals in Russia that Bill Clinton made and that the Clinton Foundation made, I mean, all this nonsense by Cain about Russia, it's Clinton, Bill Clinton, who got a half million dollar speech. It is the Clintons who got money for the Clinton Foundation from Russia. It is, it is Podesta who was on a Russian company advisory board that was apparently funded by Putin. So uh, the, the, the news media's one-sidedness is the worst I've seen in my lifetime, and I'm old enough. That's a fairly long statement. I, I, I want to go back to what House Speaker Paul Ryan said through a spokesperson. You were Speaker right. of the House, as we know. He expressed confidence in the electoral system. He is a Republican. Our democracy relies on confidence in election results, and the Speaker is fully confident the states will carry out the election with integrity, Ryan's National Press Secretary said in an email. Well, if Ryan... You just is, simply disagree no, with Paul for, Ryan? First of all, Paul Ryan's from Wisconsin where they actually have honest elections. I think if Ryan would go and look at the history of Philadelphia, including four years ago, the intimidation... I, I assume he's probably looked at other elections and he's talking about the whole electoral process. Well, I'm just, I'm just saying to you, there are clearly cases where you clearly have intimidation. There are cases where you clearly have theft. There are cases where you have people... There's a guy in California who was voting 24 years after he died. I mean, so to suggest to us that people who are concerned about honest elections are somehow nutty, I think is a mistake. Second... Trump's major complaint about the election is not polls, it's not at the poll level, it's at the news media level. This election is being rigged by the national media who are doing everything they can to suppress bad news about Hillary and everything they can to maximize bad news about Trump. You just heard me talk about WikiLeaks <clears throat> with, with Tim Kaine. Yes, you, you, you spent how long of that session on... Trump and sex, and then how long in that section? I'm, I'm just suggesting to you... Let, let, let's talk a little bit about his language this okay. week. And that certainly did okay. get a lot of news media attention. It's, it's also stirring something in people who openly talk about assassination or revolution. Let's listen to this. If Hillary Clinton gets in, I myself, I'm ready for a revolution because we can't have her in. If she gets into government, I'll do everything in my power to take her out of power. Which, if I have to be a patriot, I will. It sounds like you're saying that it would be acceptable to assassinate a president. If she's corrupt, why should be, she be able to stay in office? He basically said it would be okay to assassinate a president. Governor Mike Pence was quick to rebuke the first voter, but are you concerned about all that talk of violent well, first unrest of all, if suggest, Secretary Clinton wins? First of all, to suggest that it's okay to assassinate a president, I think, is a felony. Um, and I think that it should be. Uh, you, you can't talk about uh, attacking or assassinating the President of the United States. Uh, and, and you shouldn't be able to, and that guy's a fool. But I think <clears throat> if I were to go out and look for the most foolish Clinton supporter and ask you to give them equal time nationally, I could find you some pretty nutty people who are for Hillary Clinton. But, but 
but with things you're saying right now that the election is rigged, Senator Sessions is saying the election is rigged, Mr. Oh, Trump is saying, are you concerned what will happen if Mr. Trump loses and millions of his voters are told that the election was rigged? I believe the news media has done, but I believe the rigging is at the level of the national establishment. I don't think it's at the level of stealing votes at the precinct level, although I do think that But, but you talked about that a little bit. Yeah, but, uh, but I, think, I think there's no question that everything possible is being done to stop Donald Trump. <clears throat> and you're seeing a case study in how hard it is to be an outsider and the double standard of the national media, particularly if you're a conservative outsider. Let's. I want. How do you explain 23 minutes on his tape and less than a minute total on the WikiLeaks speeches by Hillary? There, there was a lot of attention <clears throat> on that tape. There's been a lot of attention <laughs> with what Mr. Trump has said since about the women who are accusing him of assault. I want you to listen to one of them. Believe me, she would not be my first choice. That I can tell you, man. You don't know. That would not be my first choice. He appears to be attacking these women's looks. Is that appropriate? I think it's stupid. And I'm, look, I'm, it, I, is I, that I said, why the I coverage the continues? Day, no, the coverage continues because you guys want it to continue. The fact is, Trump did not set out to get 23 minutes against himself in less than a minute. On, on, and I think that's a devastating number, which came, by the way, from the Hill. But here's my point. And I've said this publicly. There's a big Trump and there's a little Trump. The big Trump is a historic figure. The big Trump beat 16 other people for the nomination. The big Trump is creating issues that make the establishment very uncomfortable. The little Trump, frankly, gets out of, is, is stupid. I mean, that, that comment just then is dumb. And, and, and I don't defend him when he wanders off. I've told him over and over. You know, he, he, presidents have to be disciplined. And in that sense, Hillary's probably better trained to be president. It's just that she's the most corrupt person ever to get the nomination of a major party. But, but you've got a little over three weeks left in this election, right. and Donald Trump is saying things like that again and again. Right. And you have three weeks left in this election, and Hillary Clinton is lying again and again. So the fact is we have two very deeply flawed candidates. And I think it's amazing that after a week-long barrage by the media, the total shift was two points from your earlier poll. Think about that. After a week long beating him up, the total shift is two points. So what does he have to do in these next three weeks? Clearly you're saying I think, discipline. I, th I think in a disciplined way, using texts that are thought through, he should outline the scale of corruption that permeates this city and make very clear to the American people they have two choices. They can continue the corruption with the most corrupt candidate in history, and that's Hillary Clinton, or they can vote to clean up the city, which, by the way, will lead to the kind of problems <clears throat> that Scott Walker had in Madison. You try to clean up Washington, you're going to have huge forces in the streets, starting with the unions, trying to stop you, which is what happened to Walker. He had, he had death threats. And this will attract and... the voters <clears throat> that Mr. Trump needs, not Absolutely. just I, I his think base. Will, first of all, I think it will attract a lot of Democrats who, when they look at the scale of the corruption, will decide it's intolerable. And in the debate, quickly, what does he need to do? Be calm and firm and pleasant and just continue to say the things he believes. Thanks very much for joining Great us with this you. morning, Speaker. Coming up, you've heard from both sides, but what are voters making of this dark week and an all